there a specific topic you're interested in? Let me think. Hmm. That's a drug for patients suffering from defective organs, acting slower than normal. Uh, sounds more like an ad than medication. Dr. Mink, did you know your colleague took these? No, but that does make sense. We don't exactly have a lot of physical activity. I don't take this. I prefer the all-in-one menu. All-in-one? It's regular powder food with stimulants incorporating the exact and appropriate dose of food based on our medical tracking. Huh. Nothing surprises me anymore. Is there a specific- Let me think. Isn't that the plant lying on Mr. Guard's desk? Yep. Okay. I don't quite understand why you need info on this, but you're the detective. I found something! Uh... What's going on? Something's annotated below. Psst. Do you think... Yeah, Dr. Mink must have written this. I need to understand something. You're not the only one. I'll look around for clues. You better find out the culprit, because I wasn't involved in this. Got more questions. Stay put. I don't have all day. Hmm. I've seen this somewhere already. The only way to use this pill. How did shape? Oh well. Maybe I'll find what she. <laughs> Jay was here, she'd tell me to keep trying, and something amazing might happen. But she's not here. Ah, outside community. What would you do in my place? Turn everything inside out. We need as many clues as we can. Replay the last record. I'm in the restroom. Hmm. Why are you wasting- I'm not sure- <clears throat> They must belong to Dr. Hush. Dr. Hush's medication? Which drug, exactly? No idea. Ask my tablet. My good- With it? I haven't used it. Huh. Found it in the restroom. I'll need another way to identify this flower. for today. Now I'll be all out of juice. I... I'll have to lick the whole surface of the sink this evening. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's an addict. Hey, there's an ad stuck in the drain. 
empty. <laughs> so, detective, how long is this going to take? Just a moment. I'm not the only one. The heck? It's full of nanites stuck in that sink. Not only this, there seems to be some kind of flower. Dr. Mink must have flushed some experiments. What? No, I've never done such a thing. I have my own sink. Then, what are they doing here? Beats me. I need to understand something. You're not the only one. I'll look around for clues. You better find out the culprit. Parts for experiments, maybe? That's amazing. Not a single part is jutting out of this furniture. This could be called an organized mess. Dr. Hush is a maniac. He hates when something isn't where it belongs. So he taught his maintenance bot to tidy items like this. I remember him going insane once because I didn't put my coffee exactly at the center of the table. Yeah, well, all scientists are a bit eccentric. What do you mean? I'm not eccentric. There's an exception to each rule. Hmm. You do have a point. Rock one, scientist zero. <laughs> that tablet might contain crucial information, but it's locked. Hmm. I'd better take it. Works. What? Dr. Hush's tablet. It unlocked. I'm surprised. I thought this wouldn't happen, considering. Well, you thought wrong. Let's see what this baby has to offer. Hmm. Looks like he transferred some data. Let me see. You're right. That's an external file transfer of his current project. AI Update 302. 305.zyl Is that unusual? Of course not. We regularly transfer files to our managers. Although, the receipt address is obscured. What does this mean? I can't really know who received the file, but considering the metadata, this must be someone high-ranked. Wait, I just noticed. That file was modified yesterday, but it was created in... 3,029? Six years ago? Well, that makes no sense. There must be a bug in the OS. Do you think this might be linked to our case, Mr. Brock? A transfer at 445. That must definitely be important. <laughs> so, Detective, how long is this going to take? Just a moment. I'm not the only... Wait, how come there's a ton of nanites on this particular coffee spot? I need to understand something. You're not the only one. I'll look around for clues. You better find out the culprit, because I wasn't involved in this.
no nanite on that coffee cup? This shouldn't be a surprise. And yet... I'm surprised to see only one cup in here. Doesn't Dr. Hush drink coffee? He does. Actually, he always drinks his coffee in the restroom. I know him. He couldn't bear spilling a few drops on his precious materials while working in his office. But he uses autodegradable cups. Throw them into the sink and they're automatically reduced into powder. I prefer solid cups. I don't care what they say about lack of hygiene or whatever. Coffee tastes better in it. Yeah, I can relate to that. So, Detective, how long is this going to take? Just a moment. We'll continue this discussion later. I'm not the only one here. What would you do on my turn? We need. Oh, I found. Mm. Hey, tidy. Just a hunch. Did Doctor Hush put out that ramp for you? Yup, yup for me, so I can access the table, got made and modified, for me. Is that so? Makes sense. Bots weigh tons and cannot jump over there. Oh, I feel I've got all the hints I need. Time to gather everyone. I need to understand something. You're not the only one. I'll look around for... You better... Again? Gonna solve this mice? <laughs> so, uh, are we done? Depends. Nope. Still can't. I've learned not to. Just let me know. Sure thing. So, detect. Are you done investigating? Yes. I'm ready to expose the truth. Impressive. Let's begin then. If you don't mind, Mr. Brock. This time I'll stay silent and listen carefully. As you wish. All right. We're all ears. Okay. After studying this case very carefully, I have reason to believe that the person who murdered Dr. Hush is... Actually, not a person. Tidy did this. Me not person? Murder daddy? Dead daddy? I knew we shouldn't have trusted that tin can! Really? But how? He didn't have any means or motive to do this. That's where you're wrong, Dr. Mink. And I'm gonna prove how and why. Let's start with the actual cause of death. retrieved a lamp right next to the body, which obviously seemed like the murder weapon. This lamp records events. The data indicates a shock happened at 11.02. 11.02? Impossible! You're right, actually. Dr. Hush's medical tracking stopped at around 5. Do you believe he could have died hours before receiving a fatal blow to the head? Tracking? Not reliable. Yes and no. It's reliable within a two-hour window, not six. Isn't that right, Dr. Mink? Yes, I confirm it. Our tracking device is located deep inside our body and cannot be extracted. It's reliable, but to ensure our privacy rights, it only logs once every two hours. What a great idea to make our detective life easier. Murders don't happen every day, you know. That's not all. Something else proves that we've been wrong from the start. I'm starting to wonder if I'm... Uh, there's an idea. I can 
can see the link. Hi. if I'm really fit to be a floor. All three have red stains. This fake blood has been used to stage the murder. So, like my tie? Yes, this is Ant Burger tomato sauce. We've been fooled by that? I'm afraid so. There was a wrapper in the bathroom trash can, and as a specialist with that kind of food, I distinctly recognize the taste of McFlee's Ant Burger trademark sauce. This may be a coincidence. You don't know how long this wrapping has been there. Very well. I have more proof. why my ant burger was already unfrozen. Yeah, it would be pretty difficult to rub frozen sauce on a corpse. So the malefactor had to defrost it first. Simple and ingenious, I must say. All right, so if there never was a violent thump to his head, what's the true cause of death that the killer tried to hide? I have a theory. Dr. Mink, when browsing through your medical database, I noticed an interesting note from yourself. I tried mixing those phoenixy flowers with nanites, programmed or not. It's no good. They cause the host's cardiac activity to slow down immensely, ultimately causing death. Dr. Hush was poisoned? There is evidence to support this. Dr. Hush's right hand is literally covered by nanites. Besides, Mr. Squealer here... Hey! Sorry. I mean, Mr. Guard owns a plant on his desk, which is a phoenixy. It's entirely possible Tidy overheard Dr. Mink mention this and picked up ingredients from the lab. Yeah, those robotic things have quite the memory. Tidy, no memory. Tidy cleans, tidy tidies. Tidy does not pick plants. Others could. Minky murderer. Or ratty. How 
dare you? He's right. Either of you had the means to do it. Tidy right. True tidy. Don't go thinking I'm on your side. I'm sticking to the facts. And by doing this, I'll eventually prove you're the main culprit. No, no. Perky wrong. But how? Why would Dr. Hush swallow such a poison? Let me continue. There must be a link. I'm starting to want... I... Starting to one. There must be a link. Unless I've got str I can't. Uh, oh my. I'm starting. I... Uh, oh my... Unless I've got... I'm starting... I... Uh, oh my brain is... Unless I've got... Unless I've got... Unless I've got strong... I'm starting to wonder. I. Uh, I found black stains on Dr. Hush's right hand. At first, I wasn't sure what it could be, until I found another black stain, this time on the doctor's office floor. The stain itself was very faint, as if someone had tried to clean it. But, I have no doubt, this is coffee, which can be quite tenacious. And guess what? That stain was also covered by nanites. So, the doctor drank poisonous coffee? Yeah, he must have spilled coffee on his hand while collapsing. Wait, I also drank coffee today. That's right, but you didn't get poisoned. Here's why. Oh, my. I'm starting. I. Uh, uh, I'm starting. I. Uh, unless I've got. You went to the restroom later after Dr. Hush, didn't you? The culprit had time to spill the coffee prepared in the sink before doing more, and this time without poison. Incidentally, that's where I found my second proof. In the sink? Exactly. Now, tell me, who usually prepares coffee? Tidy. Untrue. Daddy. Minky make. Coffee sometimes. Ratty too. Yes. Is that the reason you're charging our little maintenance spot for this awful crime? I hate to say that's quite a weak link. You mean I did it, Mink? I didn't say that. <laughs> but you thought it! Tidy makes good coffee, not deadly. Calm down. I'm just starting my report. Tidy adds major point. Daddy creator. 
cannot hurt. Love, Daddy. You know, I thought a machine like yourself would be all about precision. But that's no surprise. You're a defective bot. Tiny defective? What you're stating isn't entirely true. Sure, Tidy cannot attack his creator when it implies a direct contact. A poison, however, is quite a clever workaround to kill without direct contact. Hmm. I guess you're right. Indirect violence is on a lower level of priority and not part of the golden rule. But that still shouldn't be possible. His software programming shouldn't allow it. There is should and there is certain. I know the reason for the malfunction, though I'll save it for a more suitable time. There's something else bothering me. Nanites are only active for an hour or so. They lose their energy very quickly. Considering Tidy did not come to my room today, how could it get enough nanites for such a powerful poison? During my investigation, I happened to make an interesting discovery which may just explain how. Tidy could access the nanites through... What, exactly? Wish I... Huh? Oh, sorry. That hole between the rooms. It leads directly to a table in your office. Now, what's on this table? Oh, my nanites box. Exactly. If I had a guess, those nanites are brand new and charged, aren't they? You guessed right. It's fairly safe to assume anyone with knowledge of this hole could get access to nanites. And in Tidy's case, I'm sure it's perfectly aware how to activate its bot friends. Tidy different. Little bots, not friends. Darn nanites. Killed Daddy. That's called racism, you metal mongrel. Hey, not trying to defend that piece of junk, but... Uh... Wouldn't it be easier and more logical for the weasel to access his own nanites? What about you, sleepy agent? You seem keen to reject accusations on others. Me? Can't even access your room, you fool! Cause you can't bear anyone but yourself! I'll pretend I didn't hear that. But your assumption is stupid. There's a reason why you dug that hole and hid it. People, come on! Hear me out. Remember when I first found out there was a thin layer of plaster covering the hole? Now, who does the repairs in this lab? That metal junk. Oh my, that's true. Tidy can regenerate walls with plaster. Could it really be? You did this, piece of junk? Nah, -ha. human idiot. Plaster, easy to do. Even for pesky humans. Tidy, no hole. No way! I beg to differ, your metal highness. Another piece of evidence strengthens my theory that you did this. Or at least that you're a big fat liar of a bot. My brain is melting! I'm starting to wonder if I'm really fit to be a detective. I... According to the monitoring, Tidy went into the restroom at 424. He was not recorded in any room after that. However, the screen in Dr. Hush's office states that he had been charging from 450 to 1110. How could he be in the office if he didn't leave the restroom in the first place? Very simple. Yup, yup. Tidy prepares coffee. Daddy come, drink. Next, Daddy back office, 
less tidy. So, you're saying he opened the office door and you just followed him? Yup, yup. Okay. For now, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. In that case, let's examine the path of our favorite deceased doctor, shall we? I think you'll find it rather interesting as well. Tidy, no like insinuation. Before you move on, I have a simple question. What is that monitoring you're referring to? Oh yeah, that's true. You're not aware. The lab registers doors openings. Only guards are supposed to know. What the heck? All this time, we've been watched? I thought you were there to ensure our privacy. No, I'm there to ensure your physical security. Making sure nobody threatens your life. What a great job you did. You lied to us. Not me. I didn't make this system. Then who did? The government, of course. Oh, that's right. Fine. I'll send them a suggestion later then. Hmm. On the other hand, Tidy didn't seem surprised at all about the monitoring. Let's move on, shall we? There's something curious about the doctor's movement. The last time Dr. Hush was recorded, he was leaving his office at 5.04. After that, he was nowhere to be found. This is confirmed by the guard's statements, if you don't mind explaining. Sure. At 5.10, I heard a noise coming from the doctor's room. But he wasn't there. Actually, no one seemed to be there. Although, Tidy was idle, charging. I started to look for the guy, but then I heard his voice coming from behind the wall. I'm in the restroom. Except this wasn't Dr. Hush at all, but a recording coming from the meaty me. A recording? Oh! Does this mean the body was in the restroom and the murderer didn't want Mr. Rat to see it? That's unlikely. The guard checks the rooms regularly, and there's no hiding spot in there. Besides, keep in mind the ultimate goal, getting Dr. Hush in Dr. Mink's office. There's no way to move the body from the restroom to his office without going into the hall unnoticed. Lies! Okay, give us your version of the facts then. Daddy, come with me. Back to office. Before charging, Daddy head out. Tidy never forget. Daddy last words. I need to settle things with Dr. Mink. Daddy, meet Minky in hallway. Daddy follow Minky. Enter Minky office. Minky give coffee to Daddy. Daddy dead. I gotta give credit to the tin can. Its version sounds way more plausible than your own, Croc. Sure, Tidy has a bothersome recording. But how do we know when it was made? It's out of context. You could have very well recorded this and forged your so-called proof. Also, there's no monitoring record of Dr. Hush ever entering Dr. Mink's room. Wrong! Mink touches door. Enter with Daddy. Then Minky... Poison Daddy! The weasel went back to his room with the doctor? Look monitoring! When did Minky enter? 504. <laughs> Exact. Same minute that Daddy leaves. But I never did that. I never saw him today. Mr. God. I can't remember. Are you kidding me? Tidy, what about the voice the guard heard? Coincidence. Meaty me faulty. Sometimes meaty me play livey randomly. Hmm. Yes. I've seen it happen. And the whole... The coffee spot on the floor in your room? Already there. For ages. Brocky, prove the opposite? Well, the nanites. Nanites, machines. Attracted to coffee. True, Minky? I can't dishonor my profession by lying. Yes, due to their hardware, nanites are attracted to caffeine and gather inside. So... After all, it really was your doing, Weasel. No! Don't you listen to it! Mr. Detective, I told you the truth. You need to believe in me. 
Well, I have to side with the tin can. That's two against two. What do you think, Hot? I... Sorry, I'm getting lost with all these details. Guys, let me finish my theory, and then you shall decide. Fine. No, listen. Too tidy. Tidy, sad. Dead daddy. Gah. Let's focus. Tidy used the meaty me recording to avoid the guard getting worried that Dr. Hush disappeared. As a result of my assumptions, Dr. Hush could neither be in his room, the restroom, or the hall at 510. And as the monitoring confirms, he never entered Dr. Ming's room either. No way, man! That's impossible! I beg to differ. He couldn't just disappear into thin air, could he? Oh, he didn't. There's a fourth possibility, and I'm going to explain it to you. The vent? Yeah, the ventilation duct. That's the only spot the body could be hidden without anyone noticing. Pure conjecture. You have any clue to support that insane claim? Sure do. Tomatoes sauce? Yeah. Looks like the murderer didn't hesitate to put quite a lot to confuse us. Problem detected. What is it this time? Ventilation? Also used. For delivery, sometimes. Is that true? Yes. Big packages don't fit into the pipe mail, so they're delivered through the vent. It's possible the content of a package leaked. Obviously. Bam! Gotcha! Huh. Still, that would be a huge coincidence, don't you think? Let's assume you're right. In order to get into the vent, Dr. Hush would have to be in his office. He was. But you said it earlier. The last time he was recorded, he was leaving his room. How do you explain this? It's clear Dr. Hush never left his office. There's no monitoring entry between his exit and the time the guard checked the room. This was just an attempt from the criminal to direct our attention elsewhere. Even Tidy could use the doctor's hand on the button, just enough to add this to the monitor. This would imply Dr. Hush was dead by then. Yes, actually. I think he was killed even before going into his office. Absurd. Oh, really? Well, I have another clue. But that's not even a location, is it? But that's not even But that's not even a location, is it? But that's not even a location, is it? Remember where the poison came from? The coffee. To poison him, it'd be easier to have Dr. Hush drink the coffee in his office. Except, he never does. Dr. Hush always drinks his coffee in the restroom. He's too maniacal to risk spilling drops while working. And yet, there's a coffee stain on the floor. What do you insinuate? That the stain was made when Dr. Hush was dead on the floor? This is exactly what I mean. Rocky liar! Daddy take coffee in office sometimes. Again, I'm afraid it's your word against his, detective. Yeah, it'd make a lot more sense that the doc spilled it by accident. Rocky, done for! Give up! No good. Even Mink starts to think my theory is too far-fetched. Am I really on the right path? Everyone. Well, except Tidy. I know how all of this sounds, but please, allow me to continue and trust me. Silly Brocky! Alright, let's assume Dr. Hush drank his coffee in the restroom and died. To get into the vent, he would have to get back to his office first. How? Simple. Tidy can carry objects. You're saying... This little metal thing carried Dr. Hush all the way to his room. <laughs> no way, man. I would have noticed. 
Are you certain? Should I jog your memory? Uh... At 4.38, the guard wasn't at his seat. He had received a phone call with terrible reception. When this happened, he opened the lab's main entrance to improve the signal. What? But on the line, no voice, only music. During that moment, he was looking away. Is that true, Mr. Rat? You blundered? Hey, you know how this is. Reception is terrible in here. Actually, you may not. After all, you've got no friends or anyone. Ah, so it's true. He thought this was a spam call, but here's what I think. This was you, Tidy. It wouldn't be hard for you to simulate a phone call and play some music, am I right? He can. Rocky, what music? Okay. Tidy, play music. Oh, no thanks. Tidy, no call. Nah. -ha. Although the guard was still making sure no one could enter or exit the lab, at that moment, anything could have happened. Hmm. I'm trying to imagine Tidy carrying the doctor in the hall and opening the office door with his hand. It's technically possible. Just downright crazy. This would also explain why Tidy was found in Dr. Hush's room, even though he supposedly stayed in the restroom. Take it the other way around. What would be the point of this call farce if Dr. Hush was safe and sound while returning to his room? There would be nothing particularly disturbing. No. Tidy no call. Rocky death. So, when did he die? Between 424 and 438, as this is the time Tidy went into the restroom and left. Rocky ignores. Poor Tidy. Daddy dead. Your theory is accurate. There's still a lot that needs explaining. For example, how could Tidy put Dr. Hush into the vent? It's not like either of them could climb a ladder. Wrong. I know exactly how Tidy did. Don't forget Tidy's main ability. Extended arms. Hmm. Are you serious? Impossible! Pray tell. Why would it be? Arms stretch to nine feet max. So what? Look! You're kidding, right? How can we know it's not just pretending? Let me check its data. Hmm. I'm afraid it's true. It has extended its arms to the limit, which is nine feet. Dr. Hush's ceiling is the same height, Thus, Tidy couldn't reach the vent. No, no way. Aha! Told ya! Rocky theory, gone. Kaput! I need to think fast. I'm convinced Tidy was involved. He has to be. Take a look at the room configuration. Both scientists' offices are a reflection of one another. As such, the vent height is exactly the same in both rooms. How high is it? Ten feet. Yeah, the laser column in this room is ten feet, and it goes up to the ceiling. And with Tidy's arms reaching nine feet, that's not enough. Oh, Rocky agree. Admit defeat! No way. We're just missing a little something. The workbench! Heidi can stand on it. It's visibly about two to three feet high. But the metal thing he can't jump on there, can it? Not jump. This is the point of a ramp Dr. Hush designed for it. You told me yourself, Tidy. <laughs> Tidy, learn. Close mouth. Sorry, Croc, but it seems like pure conjuncture. Oh, but I can prove it. You can? Go! Go, Mr. Brock! Heidi does not understand? You're not the only one, actually. I admit, I'm not sure myself. Um, what did I say? Let me try again.
Here's a picture of the room. Look, there are crumbs all over the table. Oh, that's true. Now, as you know, Dr. Hush is a neat freak. How could he leave crumbs everywhere? The answer is simple. Dr. Hush wasn't alive. Tidy, you crushed them while climbing on the ramp. Nuh-uh. Tidy woke late. Not cleaned yet. Oh, I wish for once you'd tell the truth. Admit it. That's what happened. You climbed up, stretched your arms to get in the vent, and put Dr. Hush inside. Then, you pushed the poor chap towards Dr. Mink's room. The more we talk, the more... <laughs> huh? Is it laughing? I... Huh? You what? Will you change your mind and pretend it's not possible for you to climb there? Hmm... Is possible. My pleasure. Huh? Juicy Brocky fall into own trap. Brocky lucky circumstances. But luck running out. Might you be more specific? Look map. Ventilation duct two feet high. Tidy three feet high. Cannot bend, cannot fit. Loss cannot stand on floor while pushing all way through. He's right. Tidy couldn't fit inside. And the distance is way too long to push all the way through the vent while standing on the ground. No. Oh. Rocky, done for. No. I... Um, I can prove how. Let's take a look at that picture again. This is how Tidy did it. Right here. That? You sure? Well, no, but it's pretty, isn't it? Can't you be serious for a minute? Right here. That? Well... Can't you be... We forgot to ask ourselves one important question. What opens the vent trap? After all, it's not always open. That's right. Unlike mine, it doesn't have a ladder and an automated way to... Oh, I see now, the lever! Are you suggesting...? Yes. First, Tidy opened the vent and put Dr. Hush into it. Then he grasped the lever with one arm and pushed the corpse with the other. Whoa! Now that's the craziest thing you've said so far, Croc. Is that even possible? Let's see. If this map is correct, the vent is almost nine feet wide. Yes, it's absurd, but technically possible. The maintenance robot clinging onto the ceiling. You're insane. Let me judge how insane I sound after all this is over. Let's not forget the finale. The corpse in Dr. Mink's room. Yes, Tidy pushed him, but the pertinent question is, when? Indeed. There's a specific piece of evidence that tells us exactly when it happened. Ah, I see. Ah, it actually, I... Uh... Uh. I analyzed Dr. Ming's lamp. The data I gathered indicates a fatal shock at 510. Oh, I get it now. Well, I don't. What's the fuss? Tidy needed to put the lamp next to the body, but he couldn't do it himself. So, he put it in the vent alongside the corpse. Makes sense. The fall must have damaged the lamp. But wait, 510? That's early. If there had been a body lying in the middle of my room, I would have noticed. And didn't you say this was the data from my lamp? Tidy could not access mine. Good. Rocky theory falling apart. Wait. Okay. I admit, I fooled you. Yes, I said this was the data from Dr. Meng's lamp. But I never claimed this was the data from the lamp next to the body. Ah? Uh -huh. The croc is confusing me. Let me explain.
Of course, we immediately consider that the lamp next to the body is Dr. Mink's. However, this lamp's data revealed a surprise. It belongs to Dr. Hush. <laughs> Incorrect! Uh -uh. Wait, so that's the one Tidy pushed into the vent? Yes, there's no doubt about it. Nah, if that's what happened, there'd be two lamps here. Mr. Rat is right. How do you explain that the other lamp, my lamp, is on Dr. Hush's desk? We'll just have to prove Tidy picked up Dr. Mink's lamp. Could he now? Just think, where was Dr. Mink's lamp originally? No, show us. Well, right there. Dr. Mink, your lamp was right here. Well, yes. How did you know? With the door permanently shut, there's only one spot Tidy could access. And that's this hole in the wall. Again? Oh no. If it were me, I'd steal Mink's lamp, then pass it through the vent so it fell in the intended location. Dr. Hush's lamp wouldn't even have to move. That's a relevant matter. Unless... Tidy, you've been awfully silent. Cat got your tongue? Or is it because you realized you slipped up? After picking up Dr. Mink's lamp, it was supposed to throw it through the vent. However, Tidy inverted the lamps. Inverted? And I can prove it. You see, I noticed something off in Dr. Hush's room, especially when you take his personality into account. Let me show you in the picture. The lamp? That's actually the weasel's lamp, huh? Yes, but that's not the strangest thing. Don't get it. Okay, this information should make it clear. After being told Dr. Hush was a maniac, I noticed the way the lamp was positioned was off. It's neither at the center of the desk or facing the front. There's no way someone so obsessed about order would let an object be so badly placed. Okay, why not? So what? This explains what happened. Dr. Hush's lamp was originally on this desk, perfectly centered. Tidy took Dr. Mink's lamp. Right at this moment, he got interrupted. So he put it next to the other. After he left, Mr. Guard, he executed its plan. But he took the wrong lamp which was pushed through the vent. Tidy's objective was to make us believe Dr. Hush fought with Dr. Mink in the morning at the time his tracking stopped. This timing only makes sense if Tidy made this mistake. Then, if it wasn't the body falling, what caused the other lamp's fatal shock at 510? Oh, do I have to explain everything? Tidy was interrupted by the guard suddenly checking the room. Now, why did Mr. Guard check Dr. Hush's room in the first place? Oh yeah, I know. I heard a noise. Oh, but it was... Yeah, Dr. Mink's lamp receiving a shock. In particular, I believe Tidy intentionally bumped it from a high distance to break it and make us believe this was the crime weapon. Nice thinking. Although, if it's Dr. Hush's lamp that was pushed through, Shouldn't it suffer from a shock, too, when it fell from the vent? It did. Although non-fatal, that lamp received a shock at 11.02. And this explains the last mystery. Ah. Uh. Well, that's when a shock... Ah, uh, let me... Dr. Hush until you came in. He simply wasn't in the room before. But if a body were to fall from this high, it ought to make a huge bumping sound. That's accurate. I'm not deaf. 
Sure thing. You're not deaf at all. Remember the context when I arrived in front of your door. Oh, gosh! Oh, that will teach me to set the music to full volume. It makes perfect sense now. What does? I was focused on the door screen, so I had no idea what was going on the other side. And with that loud beat... Yeah, it covered the sound from the body falling. But wait... What again? Can't you agree with my theory? Just this once? I'm sorry. I just want to know the whole truth. That's so exciting! Except your colleague has been assassinated. In order for this to work, a Tidy would have to do a last push at 11.02, correct? Yup. I believe he has sensors. He knew where everyone was. True. But he was still charging at this moment. Good thinking, Weasel. He couldn't be both charging and doing this at the same time. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! That ain't right! Tidy charging cannot push. Actually. That's possible. How? You told me yourself, Dr. Mink. Tidy goes through various states of consciousness while charging. As soon as we arrived, he started to wake up. Have you noticed the huge length of its cord? It doesn't prevent him from going anywhere into the room while still keeping connected to the power socket. So, Tidy... Who's the winner this time? Did he... uh... bug? No! <clears throat> Brocky, not detective! Impossible! Hey, is that your only argument? Cannot explain crime without essential part. The motive! Tidy, no motive to hurt daddy. Well, I have an idea. Rocky cannot! Yes, I can. Starting to I Okay. I'll admit I don't have the whole motive, but some elements lead us in the right direction. As we proved earlier, Dr. Hush died between 424 and 438. Then we shall wonder who exactly did that data transfer on his tablet at 445? I know, it's that scrap of metal. Yup. Before putting him into the vent, it used Dr. Hush's hand to transfer the data to the outside. The file was an update from a few years ago and accessed recently. Keep in mind Dr. Hush's job, which is to improve Bot's AI. My bet is that Dr. Hush used elements from this very old update and tested them on Tidy. So you think that's why he went crazy? Maybe. Old firmwares don't have the software protections I referred to earlier, which in turn could allow this indirect killing. I guess Dr. Hush made a backup of this data in case. <laughs> Care to say anything, Tidy? Rocky, wrong, wrong, wrong! Yup, yup. But Tidy, we'll wait and see. No waiting. That's enough. It's time for you to admit it. Why'd you even care? You solved that mystery. It is just a defective machine. Let's switch it off and hand it over to the police. No, you won't do such thing. Is that a threat? No, no. Yup, yup. Rocky theory, no hold waters. What? Tidy ask, simple question. If Tidy push Daddy, what Daddy? Be where he is right now. Where he... Oh... Brocky understands. 
Daddy should have fell right below that. Oh my! Once again, the tin can is right! That can't be. Then... Uh, uh. <laughs> Tidy closed your beak. No. I'll prove you wrong. I... Uh, I have to. Go ahead! Please! Master of convoluted explanations! What crazy thought will Rocky give this time? This is the end of the tunnel. The final riddle. If I can't explain it, then my whole theory goes to bust. I can't let that wacky bag of metal win. What's the explanation for Dr. Hush's position in the room? No. No way. It... can't be. Have we been mistaken this whole time? Mr. Brock? Hey! What are you doing, man? Stop! Stop! Brocky hurt! Daddy! That's awful! I can't watch this! Uh. Uh. Huh? Huh? What's... what's going on? What the... Uh, Dr. Hush? You're alive? Daddy! Not dead, Daddy! Uh, updating expression! Not dead, Daddy! Are you alright? More or less. Tell me, what's the last thing you remember? Wait... I think... I saw Dr. Mink. What?! I... I think I fell? Tried to move towards him. Not feeling well. Let the poor chap recover. No. I'm sorry, but it's too important. When did you lose your consciousness? What were you doing? I... I took my coffee. Tidy prepared it. When I drank it, my heart stopped. Then... The croc was right! It was Tidy all along! I still can't believe this low hardware maintenance model could plan a scheme as elaborate as this. Although flawed, fortunately for us. But, Doctor, you were dead. Are you a zombie now? No, I believe there's an explanation for this. You do have an explanation to everything, don't you? Can't wait to hear it. The effect of the poison was to slow down the heart rate, ultimately causing death. However, the life in this bunker, uh, I mean, lab, isn't a very physical one. As such, Dr. Hush was taking some medication to compensate. Excel 500, more precisely. I see. This has the exact opposite effect, doesn't it? Yes, it boosts the heart activity. This is what saved Dr. Hush. No one noticed he was still alive, not even the tracker. His heart pounding slowed and stayed under the threshold, putting him into an unconscious state. The shock from falling down the vent caused him to wake up for a few seconds and move towards Dr. Mink. Which also explains that red stain near the bed. There's another blunder you made, Tidy. You neglected this. Tidy, did you really try to kill me? Why? I... I hate you! I'm sick of tidying all day while you use me as a guinea pig! Tidy, clean the floor! Tidy, move this thing a little to the left! Tidy, make me coffee! I can't take anymore! Where did Tidy learn to talk like this? The firmware... it worked! Why did you pretend to be the same dumb bot? What? This is the project I was working on. The government sent me some incomplete files from an unknown scientist, working on the same field years ago. He never got to complete his work and disappeared suddenly, but I was able to recover this code. I needed a specific bot model to test that firmware. The only one at my disposal was Tidy, but I noticed some weird behaviors. Like, Tidy would suddenly laugh for no reason. <laughs> 
code itself seemed unethical and dangerous. There were some references to copying the human brain. I decided to stop this research and alert. Oh my gosh, that's why you did it. Now that you experience feelings, you don't want me to revert to your regular firmware, do you? I'm so sorry, little guy. I caused this. I messed you up. Uh, you really shouldn't be sorry. You're the victim here. I can fix you up. I promise. No! It's trying to escape! We can't let it happen. Who knows what disaster he will cause in this state? Tidy. Hot, stay here with Dr. Hush. I'll handle this. I've set the emergency plan. He won't access the controls. Rubbish guard! Let me out! You won't go nowhere. I did nothing wrong! Daddy is alive! Only by chance. And stop calling him Daddy. You're nothing more than a defective AI in a metal scrap. Now, let me switch you off. We'll fix you. Never take orders from a petty human. I'm perfect. The only defective one in this room is you, human scum. I've got new orders from my new daddy. When I'm out, he'll take care of me. What? Who? It's quite funny, actually. You see? No, I promised. You'll have to figure it out by yourself. A shame. Really? Because you never will? Stop this nonsense. This is my last warning. Switch off, or else... Save your breath. You'll never get me. Well then, I'll make you switch off, one way or another. Did you get it? For good? I guess. Not! Ah, I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! It's going berserk! You will regret this! Everyone in this city will be destroyed! Go oh, away! It escaped! Hey, wait! That's mine! Okay, get that sucker, and bring it back! Come back here, so I can smash you into pieces! Uh, too bad I can't shoot with this thing, so no choice. I'll have to bump into that crazy bot. Let's see what this baby can do!
Now for the hard part. How do I get back to the lab? Ah. Hey, Chief. I, uh, got a little lost on my way back. Uh, well, uh, here's that criminal bot. What's left of it, anyway? There. You can have some scientists check its components and confirm... You realize what you've done? Yeah. I stopped a dangerous criminal at the risk of my life. You put hundreds of citizens at risk during your little highway escape! My escape? People are in shock. There are news reports everywhere. You stole a hover bike. You bumped into air cars. Innocents could have been killed. No chaos like this ever happened in the drums for ages. Huh, good. I gave those rich folks some events to talk about. So what? You think that's funny? What did you expect me to do? Sit back and wait for that bag of screws to wreck the city? There was no other way. There's always another way. This robot wasn't much of a threat. You, on the contrary. Our collaboration ends here. What? You're firing me? Consider yourself lucky I don't throw you back in jail. Perfect. I'm out of here. Don't call me back. Because next time, I won't be here to save your bacon. Mr. Brock! Nephew, don't bother. This man only brings misery to everyone around him. Mm. Listen to me. I forbid you to get close to him ever again. But... No but. The situation will get dangerous soon. What do you mean? Come on now. I've got to bury some suspects for another case. To bury? Yes. To interrogate. Oh, I see. You're using code names. Yeah. I'll be right behind you, Uncle. So angry, pointless. Deep down, I knew Wes was right. This was just one little robot. It couldn't have done so much damage. Could it? Who knows? But that's when I noticed it. What the? All these calls and messages? Graf, these are in trouble. Shoot, I need to... I, uh... I'm coming, son! 